Karunaka, Otomote Rene, Otowako Araki, Toto Kaita Mufanui, Tenetimihi, that's a Toto Okoto Puhi, Okoto Mana, Kirtato Manuhiri to Araki, no Terra Taha of Moana Nui Akiwa, that's a Toto Ko no, Omihi. Kita raka tira o tau Māori i raro o te mau ko tēnei kaupapa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Pai te koutou ko nō, ko kūku mō tātou tini aitua, he pauama e tauama a koutou whai o koutou moi. A tu huri hau ki e koutou o te kanawe ora, tēnā koutou katoa. Just so that no one here can feel too sensitive about being stuck with some of these things. We, 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 in the political and economic model which we all belong to, wealth is routinely destroyed. And the people who destroy it are never accountable for it. Right? They never acknowledge the accountability. They don't, quite often they don't even know they've done it. But we routinely destroy huge amounts of wealth. <coughs> and the worst offender in the New Zealand economy is the state itself. And we tend, in our behaviour, because New Zealanders are uh, hooked on the state, even though they might resent their addiction, they're basically hooked on it, we tend to imitate them continually. And I have watched Naitahu make decisions which have resulted in huge amounts of wealth not realised, which is the equivalent of destroying it. Turning down opportunities, but I watch other people doing this, I watch the state doing it. And imitating the models around us is only going to lead us into more and more of that behaviour. And so, I, I'm entitled, what I'm want to speak to you about as horizons of our own. That we've got to have a different strategy as indigenous running developing indigenous economies uh, from the standard model around us. Now I would not like you to think that at any time I want to run down the importance of being able to pay for the groceries. We're always going to have, we're going to have to pay for the fuel, and we're going to have to pay for the groceries, we've got to have ordinary cash flow, we've got to manage those things. But if we do not have a longer term strategy to achieve what very few other cultures have ever satisfactorily achieved, that is intergenerational maintenance of capital. Right? Even the great German com family companies, you know, are only about by the fourth generation they're being sold into the market. If this dream of intergenerational wealth and in the maintenance of intergenerational capital to support a long-term future for us as tribal peoples, if that's to be made real, the one thing we cannot do is build models which are simply <coughs> imitative of the standard norms around us. Um, we don't talk about or think much about our own development that is on the front line. We're talking about bringing up young people. We're sitting in here talking about it. Right? We developed a thing within Turinamu Naitaku from the outset that every second meeting was going to be a wano. The idea of that when it was started was that it would be used for the personal development of the people who are exercising governance. Now becomes a sort of substitute meeting, where you sort of run things for a bit of a trial and you work out things on a non-decision basis. This, is, this intersection of politics and the development of human capital, we've got to train the young. We've got training, training, training. Education, no problem. That's a given. But unless we develop the thinking and the quality of debate and get the interchange of ideas working, then 
people are going to sit around with a great big agenda working out decisions. And the more and more they engage themselves in decisions, without the development that's required behind them, without the quality of debate that's required behind them, they end up basically making a whole lot of decisions about footnotes and you know, all sorts of peripheral stuff. They lose the vision of that horizon. <coughs> that no one goes back to basics and say, what the hell are we doing? Where's this taking us? And because it's at the political level, it necessarily involves, this was early in the morning, <laughs> egos, obsession, self-interest, avarice, greed, and the usual cluster of psychopathologies to be found in any collector from humanity purporting to be representative. <laughs> it's generally mixed with altruism, sincerity, and very occasionally some generosity of spirit and a genuine commitment to the common good. But once you move it to a political level, it very rapidly, because particularly with New Zealanders, we, if we don't want to grapple with the real issues, we turn into the personalities. And, and our politics are full of this. Our media and journalism can't help itself, because that would mean they'd have to grapple with the issues, and that's the last thing they want to do. And so it, it becomes interpersonal stuff, and it becomes interpersonal power. My point is that the notion of human capital involves politics, and the development of human capital is really as much about the quality of political development as it is about the quality or skill base of the labour force. <coughs> and this is as true at our own Ruraka level as it is at our tribal table as it is in the wider world. Now, I can't deal with the wider world, I'm just dealing with what we've got to do if we're going to be different and manage the direction of our own horizons. 